I'll start why he's getting this going. What we wanted to do is spend just a little time here before lunch and uh, have some discussion on what future directions for pages and for paleoscience. And I just prepared a, a few slides here um, to kind of get us going and um, get some of the discussion going. Um, as most of you know, PAGES is an IGBP project. And it's, um, it addresses past changes in the Earth system in a quantitative and process-oriented way in order to improve predictions of future climate, environment, and sustainability. And we're funded, um, co-funded by the U.S. National Science Foundation, the Swiss National Science Foundation, and the U.S. NOAA uh, program, and we'll actually, uh, in a few months, have to write a new proposal to these funding agencies to get our funding for the next four years. And as um, Torsten showed you on Monday, um, the way we've organized uh, our science plan is around uh, three foci, or four foci, does that work? Yeah. Um, climate forcings, regional and climate dynamics, global and earth system dynamics, and human climate ecosystem interactions. And then we recognize that there are these cross-cutting themes that tie these foci together. Uh, chronology, proxy development, and calibration and validation, modeling and data management. And what I uh, took out from the science plan that uh, you have the pocket guide for it, but you can get the full plan on the web is just kind of a summary here of uh, how we organized within our science plan and how what our implementation strategy is. Because it's fine to have these science uh, foci, but you need implementation uh, to get things going. So this is just an example from focus three, the uh, global earth system dynamics. And underneath this, we uh, have identified four themes, the hydrologic cycle, rapid climate change, interglacials, and ocean biogeochemistry. And what's important for um, the implementation of uh, these themes is uh, these self-organized working groups within each of these themes. They're the groups that uh, are working on uh, progressing us forward on our science within uh, these themes. So for example, uh, one of the working groups is PIGS past interglacial, and um, they'll be having, they've already had one workshop, they'll be having several others over the next few years to uh, start working forward in uh, progressing what we know about past interglacials. Also important though is we realize there are a number of external programs and projects that are also, can contribute uh, to the uh, pages paleoscience. So for example, for pigs, you see here a number including PMIP and images, uh, et cetera. So it's uh, organized both from within uh, the pages and paleoscience community, but also interacting with appropriate external programs. So to um, get you thinking a little bit more about uh, where we go into the future, to make sure we have some discussion, I actually came up with two of my questions for uh, the future of paleoscience and pages. Um, of course, if you have other uh, topics or things you want to discuss, uh, also bring them up. But just when you think of oh, Jonathan Overpeck's talk on the first day and the fact that he, uh, Ayako, and a number of other uh, paleoscientists and pages scientists are going to the Venice scoping meeting next week, what paleoscience would you like to see in the next assessment of IPCC? And the second question in terms of how PAGES actually works, because remember, we don't do the science, you do the science, but we try to um, promote it, integrate it, communicate it. Uh, what new, or if you like the way it is now, old, means of organizing and communicating our science should PAGES develop? So I'm done talking and it's, now your turn at the floor.
everyone wants to go to lunch. Lunch isn't ready yet, so. <laughs> As far as I know, in, based on the discussion with, I had several times with Thomas Stocker, is uh, the question whether we would have one chapter on paleoscience, again in IPCC AR5, or, or paleoscience will be divided into different sections, in different chapters then. Uh, and it's clear that uh, when we were con confronted with as uh, in the pages IPO in Bern and, and different people discussing it, we, we were just arguing for a, one full single paleo chapter because we think uh, that the time scale and, and the red line going through the time scale in one chapter would be, would be nice and very interesting. And, and we, we, we just collected arguments for that. I will not uh, repeat the arguments here, but it would be interesting to hear what the people think about. I think it would be wonderful if paleo science would be integrated actually in the chapters. And, uh, but that requires that actually very strong uh, contributing authors or lead authors would actually uh, be on the other chapters. I mean, paleo science is, well, such a broad subject it pretty much covers 99.9% .9 of our, our Earth's history, and just separating this out from the rest doesn't seem very reasonable to me. And it should be integrated. It will be a challenge because we haven't really, um, well, practiced uh, this integration very much. Uh, the Cliver pages connection, from my point of view, is, is still rather weak, although the pages Cliver working group is, is very. Uh, active, but Cliver, for example, does not really pay much attention to the reverse time axis uh, science. And uh, so I think this would be a wonderful challenge actually for the pages or climate community in general to get integrated into model evaluation, into, into all the other things. Uh, climate sensitivity, of course, is, is something that will be constrained by paleo data. And, uh, in, in all of the previous IPCC chapters, I think um, the paleo perspective could have been integrated rather than outsourced. And I think the pages community or cli climate commu paleo climate community shouldn't get outsourced into a chapter, but just stay within the game. So that's my opinion. Sorry. More comments? I think for, uh, for me, um, Axel's perspective would be the ideal, but I'd, I'd like to, I mean, my, my perspective would be to try and work out just how much hostility there would be in each of the chapters from the modern climatologists, and if the paleo was in any way marginalized in any of the chapters, uh, or really given, you know, a few short paragraphs uh, because of that, those sorts of attitudes which prevail in, with, with some modern climatologists, then I think the better option would be to have the paleo chapter. But if we were to write it, I like, I like Heinz's idea of, of having a continuum of time perspectives, but also, I mean, there are so many questions we have for paleo climate which might not be relevant to the future. So it would be to focus those paleo climate studies on things which are relevant to future change. So not the whole of paleo climate, but paleo climate relative, rel, uh, most relevant for future change. So two options. The, the, the ideal is modern climatologists give us a fair run and we go right in their chapters. But I suspect that we're not mature enough in our relationship with them for that to happen. So I think the paleo chapter is a better option than being marginalized in the main chapters. Well, I think that uh, we have a role to assess the skill of models. So, for instance, um, there's one of the PMIP uh, experiments next time will be the 8K event, which is a nice way to test your uh, model's freshwater response. So, 
all the models that participate, they can have a skill score in their freshwater response, and that certainly should be something that goes into the IPCC. Or it could be something like in the mid-Holocene, do you get the, uh, you know, the African monsoons changing or the ITCZ changing appropriately? And that can also be something that goes into your skill score for your future uh, and on uh, you know, the precipitation predictions that you have. So I think there, there should be more of an effort you know, to really come, come back this loop. Like we always say, oh, it constrains the skill of the model. But we can integrate that much, much better, I think. So, I mean, I, I think having a paleo chapter is great, but it needs to bleed out into the other chapters and be an additional way to assess the skills of all the models that are participating now in the, in, uh, the coordinated experiments. Is that on? Yeah, there we go. I want to address one other issue, and that's the issue of funding. I think if we really want to increase our impact, uh, we really have to increase our funding for paleo science on an international scale. And, you know, we're all aware that most of our science is funded nationally, right, by our own national organizations, but I don't think it has to be that way. And one model I would throw out there is the uh, Integrated Ocean Drilling Program model, where it's a little bit different, but what they really need to do is rent a big ship. They actually need to rent three big ships. And so they're pooling money from different countries so that they can come up with about 100 million for international science. So this is science where there's a large pot of money available for all of us to work together on a, uh, on a single project or on a couple themes. So metaphorically speaking, what I'm proposing is that we launch or rent three ships, one on climate forcing, one on regional climate, and one on climate dynamics, or whatever themes that we pick, and try to develop a really large amount of money, you know, 10 times what we're funding paleo with right now, so that we can work together internationally and really deliver some of these answers on the time frame that I think Jim Hansen said they're needed on. Maybe I'll comment on that. Uh, one of my thoughts, too, is if you look at the present-day community, they have something called climate process teams where they bring together uh, people with the data, people that do kind of mechanistic and process studies, and people developing models to try to improve some aspect of our both modeling and understanding of the present-day climate system. And you could see something that, like that for paleoclimate um, in terms of the model and data and the process understanding of something, whether it be global monsoons or uh, decadal variability or that. More comments? What do you think about the way we've organized our science in terms of working groups and uh, are there Working groups who are missing uh, that would really enhance some of our themes here? Are there some interactions that we need to improve on? Yeah, one thing I <clears throat> really see in this uh, paleoclimate community is that it opens to the modelers. And that's uh, just wonderful, uh, but the modelers are only one part of the, uh, let's say, game out there. Um, so the climate dynamics are not really on board yet. And uh, so when I talk about paleo oh, sorry, climate dynamics, these are people who really uh, do theoretical work or trying to figure out what drives the westerlies, what's basically dynamical metrologists or oceanographers. And reaching out to this community would really help to get a much more solid background on our storytellings. And uh, I think that that will be a wonderful challenge uh, for the pages uh, community or paleo community. Um, to invite actually these people and, and ask them, okay, westerly winds in the southern hemisphere might be very important, but actually how do they work? And so I, I think that this would be a, a great thing to improve in the next uh, couple of years. Thanks. More discussion? You asked about, uh, about working groups and do you think they're appropriate or well-organized? 
I guess I'm not really clear in my mind what what is a working group besides just kind of a because besides just kind of a theme that I could sort of write in a proposal and say this research fits within the identified goals of such and such pages working group, but is it actually a group of people? Do they actually meet? I, I've been doing paleo for a, a while and I still don't really feel like that, like this and with like a lot of other of these kind of IGBP type activities, they still a lot of times seem like a bit of a closed shop and you kind of have to know the right people to get invited to the right workshops or whatever. So, I mean, I like the idea of the working groups, but if it is more than just a kind of a, just kind of a, lip service, then, then it should maybe, there should maybe be more avenues to somehow getting involved, I guess that's my comment. Well, do we have, we'll put someone on the spot here. Mark, are you here yet? He disappeared? He organized a working group. Cronus is in here. Ping Chang, are you here? Um, you know, I think there are many avenues that they're organized. Maybe Torsten can say a few things about uh, kind of just the procedure for setting up a working group within pages. Uh, Mark just walked in. Well, well, you can go next, Mark. Sure. So the procedure to set up a working group would be to have, a, have an outline of a, of a, of a, of a plan for um, a few years, and usually a working group would... Uh, would, would uh, hold um, maybe a couple of workshops, two or three or so, and, 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 and uh, envision a, a, final, a final product that, that uh, gives answers to the, the questions posed by the working group. Um, the closed shop thing, uh, I, I, sure, I've, I've heard that before, and um, well, clearly that should absolutely not be the case. And we did, we did make some efforts uh, that we, we really do not have strictly closed working groups. Of course, sometimes you, you, you want to have um, workshops that, that don't, uh, don't have 100 people uh, but, but are somehow um, yeah, manageable. And nevertheless, there, there's, now there's nothing in pages that is really a closed job. You, you, you can always, um, you can always uh, write to the working group leaders or to um, to, to me or, 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 the, or the, the SSC members uh, um, and, and make a point that you, you would like to, to, to participate. And many of the things are really completely open to, to everyone, um, such as the open science meeting, but, but also really smaller things like uh, working, groups, uh, working groups and workshops. So I hope that this is really mainly a, a wrong perception that this is a closed shop. I think um, when you think of how working groups have organized, they, they come up with a topic that is uh, relevant, that there are a number of people working on, and as Dave Anderson pointed out, try to bring together this group of people internationally uh, with the hope that um, adding those, all those pieces together will give you a greater understanding than a bunch of people doing their individual research. But now Mark is back, I think. I saw him someplace there. Um, he actually organized the uh, working group on paleo sea level, PAL-C, uh, which is uh, for understanding both past sea level and how we can relate that to our understanding of what future sea level uh, will do. So Mark, can you just say a few words about um, why you organized this working, working group and some of your activities? Yeah, I, th I think the key thing was the it was to um, nurture communication between sea level groups, ice sheet groups, isostasy groups, and all of the and uh, marine people using uh, uh, reconstructions of past ice sheet extent. And you know, so the whole point of it was to create a, an open environment with people from the different communities. Uh, and the process was such that you know, we were required to create a website. We were required to write newsletters for in pages news, which many people get, of course. So it's, it really wouldn't be possible to keep a working group uh, secret and to yourselves. And um, you, you know, there was, it's a, I found it a, a very open situation. 
Uh, so no, it's I mean it, you know it's uh, it's not really a closed a closed shop in that in that way. We were also encouraged to nurture communication with um, the past interglacials working group and the paleoclimate model into comparison project. So there'd be no way to really lock this up among your friends. So pe don't go to pages if you want that sort of workshop. You'll be forced to uh, have an open workshop. Go somewhere else. <laughs> Um, just a comment from the Pages IPO, I think that the fact that this sort of, um, well, hopefully, misconception uh, is still out there is an issue for us and obviously we're not communicating well enough to get rid of that. So I'd open up and ask the question, what can we do to change that? What, what should we do better to communicate what's going on in Pages? Ayako? Wait. I, um, about the uh, um, link to the IPCC, I, I have three comments or personal thoughts, um, which is not, uh, uh, which should be, uh, um, sorry. Um, uh, it's, it's not so clear yet, but the first, first thing is that if we start to put some scores, uh, if it's too, too severe, then I, I'm afraid that many people will, uh, many GCMs will not like to do paleo models because they, they will start to say, um, they, uh, even if for modern, modern uh, things, if you start to do scoring for, for, for the present day, they don't, uh, some people think that it, it bad score in some case doesn't mean that the whole model is bad for the future. So it's a bit, you know, it's a bit, uh, um, for the model developers, it's, it, it, it's a bit uh, uh, um, uh, 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 kind of, how do you say, uh, naive, naive thing to do to, to, to a scoring. But uh, the second thing is that indeed, they are, they, uh, we are now starting to understand that uh, not necessarily the same mechanism or same feedbacks are working in the past and future because we have different forcing, for example, in the cold side and the warm side. It's not necessarily the same uh, proportion. It's not uh, linear all the time. Some nonlinearity or some different feedbacks start to work in the cold side, in, in, for example, for glacial or if we're for, uh, even for warm, warm uh, northern hemispheric world because uh, the orbital forcing and, and CO2 forcing could play uh, could, could could result in a different way through the different uh, way of working in the season, so this kind of work try to link the future and the and the past uh, under different forcings uh, should be uh, should be worked out from uh, still uh, through many uh, uh, sensitive sensitivity studies or even uh, theoretical works like uh, um, uh, uh, like we need uh, climate dynamics as a uh, as Axel uh, ma mentioned. So uh, I think this kind of uh, um, basic work uh, should be appreciated or should be, should be uh, encouraged and maybe Pages can, uh, can, can uh, uh, try to help organize this kind of uh, um, 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 workshops or some study, uh, yeah, some projects to, to, to try to, to uh, deepen our understanding. Uh, so, so thing. Nevertheless, uh, I think it's for the public. It's 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 quite very interesting to see, uh, uh, aside the the uh, future scoring of the models, it's very interesting to see how the Earth history Earth history was uh, uh, has uh, Earth climate his change. Um, the climate was changing throughout the Earth's history, or how the model can can simulate those uh, those times. So I think we we still. Uh, expected to show some paleo studies, uh, even we, we don't do some model uh, scoring or some, some um, naive thing. Thank you. And sort of building on the, uh, helping the IPCC, we know in previous IPCCs that those who have been working on paleo have done uh, work for our community in pulling things together. So the spaghetti plot of all the, the recent changes in, in 
temperature that had been put together or um, the longer looking plots of CO2 over time over a hundred million years and longer. Um, we can hope that they will do that for a very small number of key things, but it will be a very small number. Those who have been on the IPCC know how difficult this is. Anything that we can do as a community to speed that along or to pull these together, the sort of work that PMIP has done, the sort of work that Professor Vonner was showing us this morning on synthesizing the Holocene, any syntheses like that which can be put together with the authority of pages, um, which can feed into the IPCC, will make the IPCC's job insanely easier. Um, and it will also provide those targets that the modelers can, can base off of as opposed to waiting for somebody to make them. So this synthetic job of pulling things together. So the paleoclimate community says that the history of the Holocene looks like this. Um, changes the world. It's a target and it, it really does move us forward tremendously. I'm, I cer certainly agree with what Richard just said, but actually I was going to put us back to Leah's question just now. Um, I suppose the question is the main way that people would know about the working groups and whether they have meetings is through the newsletter. So I just ask people, we know that thousands of people download the newsletter, but I suppose we should ask them, do they actually read it from cover to cover to get to the meetings, which are towards the end? Or is, would there be some way of, of publicizing the meeting? I mean, from Solas, I get a, a one-page bulletin from time to time with things like that in, which, of course, is much easier to read and, and download. So I don't want to make more work for the office, but uh, maybe people could tell us how they read the newsletter. Um, that follows up on what Eric says. Um, the newsletter, of course, reaches those people who read the newspaper and who are uh, on the list. Um, maybe the one problem is that people don't really have a formal structure of how they could propose projects. I just, side, I just pulled up the page's web page and I cite what's standing there. It says, if you would like to propose a new working group that fits within the page's science structure, please contact Torsten Kiefer. And maybe we are so used to write proposals and stuff that this direct contact, I mean, in my case, it's pretty easy. I just have to walk over to Torsten. But in other cases, that might be not so easy. Is maybe not formal enough that people dare to propose new things. Maybe it needs the deadline where you can put in a new ideas and you have to make a two-page, whatever, short description for new groups. Just a more formal things that people no, they are allowed to do that and they don't have to know Torsten personally. Yeah, I, I'm going to speak from the perspective of somebody who's starting to get into to pages and uh, you know, I, I think for a, a while I've, I've come to the, the first open science meeting and, and really enjoy what pages does and, and the newsletter and I think you, the organization does a, a really good job of organizing very important things and, and communicating very well, um, and my perception has not been one of a you know a closed shop that's hard to get into, but more um, an impenetrable sea of acronyms and 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 wondering where in all of this I might play a role and what and why I would devote time to play a role. I, I think that might be the barrier for a lot of people. So I think the it's not the organization and the communication, but how do we engage people a little better and and make it a little easier. In. And I think maybe one of the keys is to realize that Pages is going to offer a lot of added value beyond your own narrow research field, but that uh, the interaction with people on tangential and complementary areas is really uh, going to bring you exciting new advances that are important. Uh, so, uh, yeah, again, I don't know how to do that. I don't have a concrete way, but I think that's maybe a viewpoint that would, that would see Pages, act, you know, membership and activity grow a bit. Just a quick comment. We produced um, a pocket guide to Pages Science, which all of you uh, received in your registration packages. We have any number of those available in the IPO and would be very happy to send them out to people who'd like to uh, publicize Pages Science more. It's small and hopefully <laughs> understandable. So that sort of thing. If you're going to a meeting and you would like more people to know 
uh, what they could do, where they might want to get involved, then just contact us. I'd also encourage you to download the, the full plan. It really isn't that big. And uh, the IPO did a superb job of uh, taking our science and the writing that many of us did and organizing it so that it really is kind of easier to visualize. Um, so that's one thing you can do. The, in terms of the pages newsletter, I just wanted to make a comment because Axel commented on connecting to our present day uh, colleagues in climate dynamics is I actually had our library, they have the electronic journal page, put the pages newsletter link on there it's free and you know someone that's on there looking for some other electronic journal and goes through the P's happens to see it and might click on it and uh, so it does provide uh, that link to some of the climate modelers in my institution at least and climate dynamicists. So I thought I saw another hand. I, uh, I got two points to make here. One is that uh, although I don't believe it's a, Pages is not a, is a closed shop, but probably what we could do is uh, maybe something like a cryo list, wherein you have a community uh, listing, the all sort of things keep going so that uh, the people are always informed, so they don't have to go through the uh, sort of the newsletter because uh, I believe the people don't have that much time all the time to go through the newsletters. So, like cryolist is very effective because a lot of people get connected just through that. So you could always put a mailing list, so that could be very wonderful. Then the point two is uh, what I was uh, feeling from David's talk, that why people are not putting lots of uh, effort into pages uh, initiative is that there is no money. So because whenever you go for a funding agency, so you have much more, uh, have more this to the, that particular funding agency. So therefore you work for that particular project. So pages comes uh, somewhere in the in between wherein there is no much money. There is no pool of uh, sort of a projects from the pages. So it's more of an initiatives. So could be there is something which could do, you know, make a larger pool of money like what they do for IODP or something also could be useful. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, our younger scientists also asked for a listserv so that they could keep communicating after this meeting. Those of you that didn't attend that, I mean, they had a lot of excitement and energy. It uh, bodes well for our science. Um, luckily, they didn't ask us to do Facebook because I wouldn't know what to do, but <laughs> they may. Just another quick comment from me. Um, we have the Pages e-news, which anyone can subscribe to, and we try not to bother people too often, but perhaps we're not bothering people enough. We have also started using all of the major list servers to publicize events that are relevant, but we've started that recently. So, for example, on Paleo Climate List, we've now started publishing each newsletter as it comes out, and perhaps we need to do more with workshop publishing and links to which part of Pages Science that is relevant to. Um, but the, basically the Pages e-news is, is set up and has at the moment I think about four and a half thousand subscribers. What I should just say is it's not a list server, I'm sorry I made that mistake, it comes from the Pages IPO. So in that case, it's not doing exactly what um, Tamban was asking for. Yeah, it's funny that you mention it, but incidentally, there is a Facebook page for Pages OSM. So go there and upload your pictures if you'd like. Um, you don't have to. Another comment, you asked for, for IPCC ideas and um, as I understood during this meeting, IPCC is all about relevance, not about relevant science. I think we all do relevant science, um, but about relevance to um, policymakers. And that means we have to connect the paleo science to what it means for people to act today. 
Now what's the role of paleoscience is we can find out about past climate changes, past global changes, of course, but we should connect that to past people changes. And especially I call upon paleoecologists to continue that effort to relate what they find in the natural records to what people may, how people may have reacted to these changes in the past so that we can use that in the mitigation parts to even get a, find, a, find a stronger place um, for, of paleoscience and define paleoscience all also in the mitigation part as an important knowledge base on how to act in the future. And I especially miss a synthesis, as was suggested by, I think, Richard, um, in, the, in the part of paleoecology and relevance of paleoecological changes to paleo people. Any, any more comments? Okay, well, I thank you. This was a great discussion that got going. 